Hey all, so here's a graph of the coefficient of drag as a function of Reynolds number uh, for fluid flowing over a sphere. And we've got two different cases. One, the upper case with a small Reynolds number, and the lower case with a large Reynolds number. And it's independent, the Reynolds number is independent of the, you know, these experimental results are independent of the diameter of the sphere, the viscosity of the fluid, etc. It, as long as we calculate the Reynolds number, if we've got a given Reynolds number, for example, the case on the left it might be some small, or the, the upper case it might be some small Reynolds number, and in the uh, lower case it might be some large Reynolds number, and if we know the Reynolds number we immediately know the coefficient of drag. And it's powerful because we've combined all these different parameters, the diameter of the sphere, the viscosity, and the density of the fluid onto one single curve. And it does work, but the question is how could you figure out beforehand to organize the data in terms of the Reynolds number and the coefficient of drag? So to figure out these dimensionless parameters, we'll use what's known as the Buckingham Pi theorem. And the first step, which is often the hardest step, is to choose variables or parameters that may, expect, may affect the experimental results. And this is challenging because it's hard to see it at the beginning. So what we ultimately want to measure is the force of drag and the parameters that might affect it. You know, I would say the velocity of the fluid would affect it, the viscosity of the fluid, the density of the fluid, and I would also expect that the diameter of the sphere would affect the uh, experimental results or affect the force. So then you count up the number of variables that you would uh, believe that would affect the experimental results and this number of variables we call it give it the variable name uh, k and in this case k is equal to 5 because we have 5 variables. The second step is to choose what are known as repeating variables for the analysis. And when you select these variables, don't include what's known as the dependent variable. So in this case, our dependent variable would be the force of drag. So we can choose whatever we want. Let's choose the diameter of the sphere, the velocity of the fluid, and the fluid density as our repeating variables. The third step is to count the number of dimensions that we need to consider. So we'll have uh, dimensions of mass, for example, and the density of uh, mass in the numerator, or kilograms per cubic meter. We've got length, of course, because it describes the diameter, dimensions of diameter, length. And we've also got a dimension of time in our analysis. So velocity is length per unit time. So the, we've got three dimensions and we'll use the, we'll say in this case r, the number of dimensions that we need are three. And step four is to calculate the number of pi terms that these relationships could be uh, reduced to. So in this case the Buckingham pi theorem it says the number of pi terms is k minus r, in this case five minus three, and that equals two. And in this case, what we'll find is that the first pi term is the Reynolds number, and the second pi term is the coefficient of drag. And the fifth step is to actually form the different pi terms. To do that, we're going to say pi 1 is equal, let's use uh, one of our non-repeating variables, the viscosity, and we'll say the viscosity times diameter to the a power, velocity to the b power, and the density to the c power. And our goal is to rearrange these to figure out exponents a, b, and c such that the dimensions of this pi term are uh, such that there are no dimensions for this pi term. And these three parameters are what's known as our repeating variables. So we'll repeat these three when we calculate the second pi term. So the dimensions of this, let's say the dimensions of viscosity are units of mass per length time. The, v, v, uh, the dimensions of diameter is length, and we're going to raise this to the a power. The dimensions of velocity, meters per second, or length per time, raised to the b power. And the dimensions of density are mass per time, or mass per length cubed, and that's raised to the c power. So for each of these dimensions, we can write uh, an equation. Let's say mass, let's look at mass, for example. We want, in our pi term, to have dimensions of mass to the zero power, for example. So we've got mass in the first term, we've got mass in the numerator of one, and there's nothing in this term, this term, but in the density, we've got mass uh, raised, in this case, to the c power. And let's do the same thing for the length. Again, we want the dimension, uh, no dimensions of length. And in the first term, the viscosity, we've got length scaled to the negative one power. And in the diameter, scaled, we'll say, the a power, plus b for velocity. And c, we've got length to the negative 
uh, 3c power. We'll do the same thing for time, negative 1 and uh, negative b. Those are, we've got a series of three equations and three unknowns. And what we find, c is equal to negative 1, a is equal to negative 1, and b is equal to negative 1. So if we write this out, pi 1 is equal to the viscosity divided by, all three of these are negative 1, times the product of the diameter, the velocity, and the density. So to make sure we're doing it right, this better be a dimensionless uh, term. So pi 1, so we've got in the numerator kilograms per meter second for viscosity, uh, 1 over meters for diameter in the denominator. We've got seconds per meter, the inverse of the velocity, and finally meters cubed per kilogram. And the product of these, kilograms cancel out, seconds cancel out. We've got meters cubed in the denominator and meters cubed in the numerator, and we've indeed uh, done this right, and we've got a dimensionless number for pi 1. And it turns out, because it's dimensionless, we can calculate pi 1 prime, for example, and we could say that pi 1 prime is simply equal to 1 over pi 1, and it's equal to rho v d over mu, and this actually has a name, it's known as the Reynolds number. And to find the second pi term, I can do something similar, except instead of using the viscosity, I'm now using the force, and here's my other three uh, repeating variables, d, v, and rho raised to each exponent. Here is dimensions of force, or mass length per time squared, uh, diameters, length, velocity, length per time, and so on for the density, and I'll do the same thing, write out three uh, algebraic equations according to the dimensions, and what I come up with is that c is equal to negative 1, a is equal to negative 2, and b is equal to negative 2. So using these exponents, I can write pi 2 is equal to the force times the squared uh, diameter squared, velocity squared, uh, multiplied by the density. And this d squared, we can say, is, uh, it turns out, we can say the area is simply pi over 4 times d squared, or we could rearrange that and say d squared is 4 over pi times the area. We don't care about the, uh, this 4 over pi, all we care about are the dimensionless groups. And because of this constant doesn't affect the scaling, we could say, we'll just say it's pi 2 prime, and what you'll see is that uh, it's characterized as a force divided by 1 half times the projected area times the velocity squared times the density. And when it's written this way, it's known as this pi 2 prime is known as the coefficient of drag. So again, if we've done it right, uh, force of drag would be kilogram meters per second squared. We've got 1 over a, or uh, 1 over meters squared, and velocity squared, second squared per meter squared, and the density meters cubed per kilogram, and the kilograms again fall out, seconds squared will fall out. We've got meters to the fourth in both the numerator and the denominator, and then indeed the coefficient of drag is dimensionless. So if we made a graph of this, this is the original graph that you've seen, the, we've got pi 2 prime is, is the coefficient of drag, pi 1 is the Reynolds number, and what that means is that the coefficient of drag is a function of the Reynolds number and the Reynolds number only. So for all those different geometries, all those different fluids, all you need to know is the Reynolds number, some experimental data, and that will give you the coefficient of drag.